At its core, Kubo and the Two Strings is a stop-motion samurai film. But with every film that we make, we want to do something unique, something original, to tell stories that aren't typically told in animation. It's a fantastical journey that our hero goes through. It's a sort of adventure set in mythical Japan. And one of the thrills about that was delving into a culture that's so visually rich. There's an extensive amount of research that goes into all, all of the history. It's a highly important part of Japanese culture to pay attention to detail. It definitely meant that we did want to go the extra mile to make sure that what we were doing was true to Japanese culture and history too. This was where my father prepared for his quest. When I was growing up, I loved big epic films. And in some ways, Japan is the kind of the birthplace of the modern cinematic epic. And that goes directly to the influence of Akira Kurosawa. Seven Samurais, Yojimbo, the uh, village sequences, where you see the vitality and the raucousness of uh, Japanese village in the 17th century. We looked at origami. How? We looked at Isimayaki's work and how folding structures work around body shapes. We worked with a lot of woodblock kind of motifs. We looked at that and tried to bring that into the film. We used a sort of uh, simplification of large organic shapes that are prevalent in woodblock. We have laser cutters now and screen printing, so we were able to actually map on that, those textures. And so if you look at this film and all the surfaces and the ground and the skies and the fabrics in people's faces, everything has this, that same quality, that same woodblock texture because it, it was rooted in this one place. Now it's time for the final part. To see the costume people, the, the art department, everybody paying so much attention to the little details that the general audience may not even notice when they first see the film. But to see it all there, I think a lot of Japanese audiences will be proud to see that. You're trying to make something feel like it's rooted in a real place and it's outside of your own experiences, you have to do the research. If we were to depict this accurately, what would it be like? What would this world look like? It's really capturing the Japanese sensibilities as well as the Japanese culture. We rooted it in something that was real. But in the end, it really is more like an impressionistic painting of a place. And, you know, I think it looks pretty beautiful. <laughs> <laughs>